Okay, so let's look at uh, this is a, a technique that's specifically good for the trig integral here. The integrals that only involve the trigonometry functions. Integrals. So the first trick in the world is in here, it's just, you know, the problem is a problem so that you guys can learn some experience right here. But see, the first formula you want to bring in, it's called example one, you want to evaluate a row like this. It's either sine or cosine, so about cosine and square of x. Yeah. So notice that this is a, an even number. Okay. So right from this example, this is what we can do right here. According to trigonometry, we love that we've learned this from trigonometry that cosine square of x, right? We always equal. You know, we use that uh, double angle formula right here. So it makes, makes it uh, one plus cosine, but no more power. We have to increase the, the angle into a double again. Right that's why it's called a double angle divided by two. Okay. So that's the double angle formula. And then this, this is pretty, pretty uh, unavoidable. Right. So that's what we turn that into. And so that means our integral here, so that's from trigonometry. So our integral here becomes uh, 1 plus cosine of 2x, right? All over 2 dx. But doing this gives us some advantage right here. That we bring that, that to the, the, the ordinary cosine with no power, right? I mean, with power one, right here, making it easier. So here we we can turn that into two terms, one half, right? Plus uh, one half as a coefficient, cosine of two x. Okay, with that still. And then so it turns that into there's one integral for one half dx, right? And another, another integral for uh, one half cosine two x here. I think we go a lot easier this time. So the first term here gives me after the integral here it gives me a one half x, right? And the next one here gives me just a one fourth sine of two x. Let's see. Okay, double check me on that. So the now, when it's specifically cosine squared, right? Then we can go with uh, this double angle over here. So things can be done analogous, uh, in similarly, analogously with uh, sine square over here. With sine square, we use a double angle one minus cosine, okay? one minus cosine two x over two. So keep in mind with, with those uh, with those uh, formulas again. So I can quickly let you guys uh, do an FYT right here. All right. So anyone got an answer for this? Yes, you guys okay. Who would like to give your answer right here? So just a step by step. It's integral one minus cosine squared. Okay. Sine of 
squares. Plus That's how we get it done, right? And so, so now, so things, whatever I'm about to do next is really analogous, regardless of when you're doing that with sine or cosine, right? The, the, the intention I'm getting you into is that now when you got generally into a power of either sine or cosine, so let's call it example two. Let's say I can call that the sine, right? Let's increase that to the, the, uh, the point power. See what I'm saying now? In the end, it's still an even one, right? It's still an even one. Then, uh, yes? Okay. Yes, the double angle formula is the only hope for here, but we gotta do some more algebra. Some more algebra. So, and that's pretty much the, the only choice so far. So, the algebra says uh, sine to the fourth is the same as sine square of x, right? Square. Are you with me then? Yeah? And then so sine square is right here, but sine square, you can use the double angle formula, right? Turning that into so this is I'm talking about before doing the, the integral. So it's a square right here. The sine square turns into a one minus uh, cosine of two x, right? All over two, and then we square all of that. We're doing that still. So the so now it's better to put the coefficient one half away. So one half being square is one quarter. We put the quarter out front, right? So algebraically, it's the same as one fourth. Uh, now we got the 1 minus cosine 2x, uh, all square, all right. square, dx. You guys with me still? And then we're going to foil it out one more time right here. This thing right here, let's foil it out. So 1 fourth, right? It's 1 minus 2 cosine of uh, 2x, right? Plus cosine squared of 2x, all that dx. You are lengthy one, right? Sorry to get a little lengthy over here. Then it can go forth in a row. One minus two cosine two x. I'm gonna use the double angle here one more time on that reach that square in there, right? So plus a one plus cosine of four x this time all over two. And the, the one half plus one here is a three half, right? All together. So we have the one fourth, the inner row here. Now, after the inner row, it's the constant here becomes a three half x, right? And then the minus two cosine of two x right here becomes just minus sine of a two x, right? And then that one right here, we're going to have to turn that into a plus a one eighth, right? Sine of 4x, right? Plus c. And then we can multiply that one fourth to each, each term, like that, making it 3 8 x minus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus 1 over 30 second sine of 4x. Along this way, he eventually is going to run into some trouble in a sense that uh, later on when it comes to the, the higher even power, because right here I purposely keep looking at the, the even power, you know what I'm saying that? Right, the even power on the sine and the cosine of them. So we have a more convenient formula here. So the, the sine that we've done just now, we have a formula like this, sine of mx2. 
orders with the reduction formula. Because it reduces the it reduces the power, it reduces the power for sine and cosine. And the similar ones we have. If it was cosine, right? We have two reduction formulas for sine and cosine. This one right here, you see we're going to quickly apply that again. Say it back to think of that sign sign of the fourth head. So how do we get that done using the formula here? The N in this case is four, right? As we so with the formula, with the reduction formula, we can go negative one fourth. Then we got sine of uh, see n minus one. Even our n is four, so n minus one is n cubed okay. times cosine of x plus. Then n minus one is a three over n, so it's three fourths, right? And then there's an integral of sine squared of x dx. That so far. So it seems I didn't get too far much. Minus one fourth, sine cube of x minus cosine of x. And this is the x here. For you. So x plus three fourths. Now, you did this one earlier, so why don't you repeat that answer for me here? Sine square. I don't know when one half, uh, one half x minus one fourth goes. <clears throat> so now we solve it. Negative one fourth sine cube of x, right? Cosine of x. Plus, and we multiply the three fourths in, and that's making it three uh, eight x and minus zero over sixteen, right? Sine of two x plus eight. Now, uh, you guys may be a little shocked that the, the two answers don't look alike, right? The two answers, the answer we have now using the reduction formula, and uh, the answer we've done using completely just a, the direct method right here without a formula, they're quite two different things, right? See what I'm saying now? But if you algebraically boil out this thing right here, it will arrive. Same thing. Because these are the double angles. See what I'm saying now? So if you. I mean, you leave that double angle here, but you're gonna foil out that one to turn it into double angles, and even further, it, it will it will come down. It will come down and agree with each other. Because we have the we have the three eights, but these two terms are a little mysterious right here. These two terms are a little material, mysterious right here, but they will they will agree. Right. And so the, the the advice now. So what do we do? After, I mean, once I've given out the uh, the uh, the reduction formula, right? Then the advice here, more like a the advice here, right? The integral for sine to the, the n of x the x, right? We got our formula for that, right? And then the, the integral of the cosine to the n of, of x the x. Right? These two formulas are best used when these power n are right here. Even and that power is even. Okay, because there are other cases that we that we can maintain some some ordinary method right there without using that formula. So when it's it's surprisingly when it's it's just the nature of those uh, the, the nature of those straight functions when the power is raised to you know an even power like a square then, then you know we then when it's a square we got to bring it down to a double angle right but then it's fourth power that they start getting deadly or even the sixth power or the eighth power then there's no luck with that so it's best to use a uh, it's best to use these two formulas when it comes to the even powers of the sine and the cosine okay but then in that after that advisor here let me swing over and, and do we still do a couple other the, so primarily throughout those example problems that we've been bringing up for them and we're looking at uh, as just yes, either sine to to a power, right? What we are beating around the bush with these uh, 
either one of these right here. And that's why I get why the, the, the formula. But now let's have a little bit of a some experience with the the, the R power three here. And we just want to evaluate, right? Here, how about uh, so mini 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 mo pick for me between sine and cosine, which one you want to pick as your choice? Sine. Sine? Thank you. Sign this time I'm gonna pick a an, an R power. So yes, you also have your legal right to use the formula, the reduction formula. The reduction formula will work as well. But I also recommend to maintain your, your skill in learning about trigonometry. I also want to teach this method right here that uh, that uh, the, the, the direct method that works right here without using the formula. See, so anytime it comes to the odd power here, we have a strategy actually. We can always purposely separate out the so sine of two to the fifth. We have we can purposely split it out as a sine to the fourth of x times the sine of x. So you can always isolate out one power that keep it out separate. You guys see what I'm saying? Now? Right? And that's just the algebra of the trick part, right? And then further, this is what we can do next. So now we're gonna leave that the same. So we've got sine of x, okay, dx. Then that high power, that fourth power, that now be an even for sure, right? Because once we separate out one of that odd one again, right? Then the, the remaining power is gonna be a, an even one. And so you can think of that as a think of that as a sine square of x uh, square. You guys agree? Okay. But what's good about what's famously known my sine square of x? No, one minus cosine square. One minus cosine square. Yes. So in the next step, inside of that base square right here, we have a one minus cosine square of x. And there's a sine of x. That's by the way. Okay. So now at this point, you guys have seen all of that technique right here. Substitution. Just use a, a substitution for cosine. So I'm going to substitute u equal. Uh, I'm going to substitute the cosine of x with u. So u equals cosine of x. So in that way, du dx right equals a negative sine of x, and so rearranging this, rearranging the differential, we got minus du over sine. Right? That equals a dx. That's right. So things are going pretty effective, right? And so now that integral of yours now, right? So after this separate step, the substitution step right here, the integral now becomes a one minus u r square. See what I'm saying now? Actually, one minus u square r square, right? And then times the sine of x, because we didn't substitute for sine of x, but then the dx here gets a substitution. It's, it's turned into a minus du over sine of x, which will eventually cancel away our, your sine of x. You guys follow with that? Right? And I, you see, I want to purposely stay away from using a formula because. This method here that we're doing separate out the power, right? We will give rise to another kind of problem later on when we get into it. Okay. And so now with this right here we go one minus u squared or squared, right? Now it's minus du. Actually, so I put a minus sign in front, right? And so now this just take a, it's just a matter of foiling out that perfect square right here, right? And then the, the, the counting with that the negative sign, so making it Yes, the integral, one more step with the algebra up here. How about when I speed up the process a little bit? So minus 1, right? Plus uh, 2 u squared with minus u to the fourth power. You guys can double check my uh, foiling work. Okay. And then from there, now the, the integral is ready. Currently, in terms of u, we've got the minus u, right? Plus a 2 thirds u cubed minus a 1 fifth u to the Fifth power, right? Let's see. And now we just bring in that original meaning. We got the minus. So u was substituting for substituting for cosine of x, right? So you were looking at minus cosine of x, right? Plus two thirds cosine cube of x, right? Minus one fifth cosine to the fifth power of x. Plus c. And you have your, you also have your right to rearrange these cosine in the descending order from the left to the right, right there as well. Okay. You guys see the technique we're using here? 
So that's how it's done for that particular prompt right here. So you could have also, so why don't you on your own time, right? I mean, not now, on your own time outside of class, repeat this one right here, right? But using the reduction formula, it will work as well. Right? So, so make a note of that particular problem. So this is one method that's that, you know, very common. But this method is only good when your power right, is, is odd. Right? So then as we're done with this problem, you can make a little remark that the that remark is here. Remark. This would also have been And you can try that on your own time as well. Right. So the more you work through with these, the, the sharper you get, right. the better you will get. There you go. Okay. So now, after we, so these uh, examples we have brought up so far, these are all just focus on the just the single power, right, of either a sine or a cosine. Okay. So the more challenging one was the even power. So the, the, with the square, when it's Specifically, the square, right? On the sine or cosine, we gotta go through the, the double angle formula, right? To bring it down. But then, when it's a higher square, then it's best to use uh, the the reduction formula. When it's a higher even power, like a power four or a power six, it's better to use uh, the reduction formula. Sounds good. And we got these. Okay. And now, the next kind of trick in the world, because the, the world is not always that simple, and life is not always going, you know. The, Good. So smoothly like that. So unfortunately, life keeps getting more complicated, and more complicated. So as we go on in it, on it. So now, let me bring you the next problem right here. So in my next example, that's called example four here. So we want to evaluate train. Now here's how we start with that right here. So we got an integral. Okay, part A right here. How about uh, making some space right here and I have a cosine making some space right here. The idea now is that we want to start getting into that kind of problem where it's sine to some power and then cosine to some power. You guys see what I'm saying? Yeah? Okay. Power one and power one is all too simple. So how about I'm going to purposely go in with uh, cube square. So we're getting into that kind of a trick in a world where it's involved two functions, the sine and the cosine. Each one of these has its own power. See what I'm saying now? And so the specialty about this one here is that there are two different powers, right? There are two different powers, but one of the two powers here, either on the sine or the cosine, but one of the two powers here is uh, odd. You see what I'm saying now? Okay, see that guy right there? Being odd. So the specialty about this problem, and you open the parentheses for me before I get started. One of the two powers. If, if both, it's even super better. Okay, but right now, right now, one of the two, one of the two powers, right, is odd. See, and, and I mentioned that other technique on the other board for a good reason because when it comes to this, there's sadly no reduction formula. The reduction formula only works for the single, you know, the single sine or cosine. So now we are observing that we got one of the two being, you know, the, the odd, right? One of the two powers being odd. So we're gonna tackle down right in that the odd guy like that. So that same trick. I'm gonna rewrite this as sine squared of x times the cosine squared of x. Are you guys following? Right. And then I'm going to separate out that leftover one. So that's another sine of x extra, right? It's just the nature. So as long as you recognize one of the two powers being an odd one, right that's super good. Sounds good? Okay. And so with that guy now, then the, the, the whole plan now is that this is very similar to the, the work we have done previously. I'm going to purposely turn that 
I'm, I'm leaving the cosine square out for now, right? Whatever power that is, whatever power that is for the cosine, I'm leaving it out. I'm leaving it there for now. The sine square, yeah, I'm gonna turn that into famously a one minus cosine square again. Let's go with that. Okay, times the cosine squared extra here and times the sine of x. Okay, the x. Good. Okay. I hope you guys see the generality of how we handle these problems. Right? So now, yes, you have your choice. You distribute that uh, distribute that cosine square into each term, but we can do that later. So now think about a u substitution again. I'm going to let u equal the cosine of x. And so, so that means. Uh, and then I believe you guys are fluent enough with that, so I'm going to get a little quick, pretty uh, uh, quick right here, but du over minus sine of x, right, will equal dx. I skipped all of that, so finding the derivative step, because I, I hope you guys are fluent enough with that, now. Okay. Mainly du dx is negative sine of x, right, but then we rearrange the, the differentials in a way that we can solve separately for the dx. Yeah. And so now we have everything we need. So the integral becomes... Uh, so in parentheses, is I have 1 minus u squared because we substituted u for cosine, or we substituted the cosine of x for u. Right? And, then, and then, but don't forget, we have another u cosine squared, so that multiplied with u squared. The sine of x didn't get any substitution. It stays the same, just like that same philosophy. Right? And then the dx here is substituted by a du over negative sine of x. And I could have also, I could have also written that as a dx equals a minus du over sine of x, but for some slight instance, I decided not to, okay? There's no particular reason for that. So now, this negative sign, we, we turn the, the, the term to here, reverse, right? And then the sign cancel with that, and the negative sign makes that the subtraction here reverse the order for here. So really, your integral now, as a clean up version here, it becomes a u squared minus 1, right, times the, the u squared. You on the alpha at this point. So now we're just gonna see, just gonna at the end distribute that in, right? Making it integral for u to the fourth minus u squared, right? Or u. You know what I'm saying? No? Right. And now we are making it uh, in the next step, right? In this space right here, fine. The integral here is gonna be a one fifth u to the fifth minus one third u cubed plus three. And remember, don't forget to bring back your original variable, right? So now we're going to have uh, one fifth, right? Cosine to the fifth of x minus one third, cosine to the third of x plus eight. Yeah. Solve another antiderivative problem. So let's do another one. And I'm, I still want to leave this space, and this work here on this board here. I'm going to move over to the other board. We're still in example four. Let's call that part B here. Right? We're still in that business about you know a power of sine right? multiplied with a power of cosine. Like that. Okay. Here, let's stay with the uh, about sine as a cosine. Right? Can someone volunteer for me an odd number? One. Oh, two, two simple. Three. three, okay, some some other odd number. Five. Five. Seven, nine. Five. Okay. We've got once again two powers, right? And they could also be both equal to each other as well. The point now is that both powers are odd. That's even better, right? That's even better. So you got to, at this point here, because see, you can use a technique that I pointed out on the other side right there, as long as you recognize one of the two powers being up. So here we got both. So you can you can even make your choice. Okay, you make your choice. So the, what do I mean by making your choice? The idea here is that you can you can you can choose this cosine. We can leave the sine cube the same, but choose the cosine to separate it out as a cosine to the fourth times a cosine. That's one choice. See what I'm saying now? Or you can go the other way. Or you can go the other way. You can make that integral as sine squared of x times cosine to the fifth of x, right? Times the extra, the separate it out, sine of x. Yeah. That's what I meant by the choice again. See what I'm saying now? So here's the thing. Uh, 
for, for, for my students learning right here. Why don't you guys proceed with this route right here on your own, okay? But not right now. See what I'm saying, huh? I'm going to lead you guys through this choice right here. So one problem, there are separate different routes to get there, right? So I'm going to lead you guys through this route right here, and you guys can try it on your own, on, on, on this uh, particular further route. Okay. So here, I separate it out in cosine. Because you can see, the good thing is both powers are odd, right? I wonder if you need to know that. Right? Okay. Both of them. Both powers are odd. Okay. So in that way, I separate it out that the cosine, so here the sine cube stays the same. The other guy over here, I'm going to think of that as a 1 minus cosine squared of x, r squared times a cosine of x. Am I rushing your step? This is cosine to the fourth, is a cosine squared squared, right? So with extra notes here, you need to, that is the same as a cosine squared of x squared. And that's cosine squared. And I'm lying, I'm lying, sorry. One minus sine squared of x. Okay. Because if cosine to the fourth is the same as cosine squared squared, right? Then that's cosine squared right here that I noted is the same as one minus sine squared. Okay. You want to do it now? All right. And so now, and of course things will get lengthy, but it's not going to be as bad. So at this point right here, I am going to substitute, right? I'm going to let u equal sine alpha sine of x in this case, right? And in that way, right here, solving for it, we have the du over cosine of x will equal the dx. Because at this point, we have done that the operating now from many times in our right? To the point that say the du dx will equal cosine, so we are writing the differential. That gets us du over cosine of x will equal dx. So, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Surely. And so, this one right here, the integral becomes a, a u cube. So we substitute a sign for, for u, right? And then we got the 1 minus u squared, r squared. Right? And we got the cosine of x, and multiply with the u over the cosine. Why are you using cos? Yeah, just erase the cosine. You should be yeah. fine, right? And then we cancel that, right? And, and here, it's just a choice for now. And then the other one, you guys can try that on your own. Right and then you can just foil it in. Yep. You can just Which foil is, it in. That's by right. this point, it's just manual labor. Manual labor? <laughs> well, at least I get paid for manual labor. I don't get paid for doing homework. Trust me, the more homework you do, the later on, the better you will get. Yes. Just using a rounded bush with the algebra, right? Now, now the integral is really ready. One point, you choose a point, right? Minus. Six, which we eventually cancel to a one third, right? I'll, I'll do that later. Which is six power, right? Plus one eight, which is eight plus c. Right. So in the final step right here, one fourth, we substituted the u for cosine, any cosine, so we got sine to the fourth of x, right? Minus a one third, right? sine to the six of x, yeah. Plus a one eight right? sine eight of x plus c. We done another one. Okay. I want you guys to take about five minutes. Work on this. So it's the same problem, right? But work on this route right here. See what I'm saying? Huh? The strategy is all here, and we want to explore a couple of things with that. Okay. So spend your time doing that, please. So what did you find for your final answer? Well, um, yeah, it seems pretty different. It's 1 over 8 um, cosine to the power of 8x okay. minus 1 over 6 cosine to the power of 8x. Did you say 1 over 6? Yeah. Okay. Sine, wait, cosine? Yeah, cosine. Okay. Okay, 6, right? And then what do we have here? Plus c. Plus c. So 
it seems pretty different, right? But actually, it should be the same because there's a way to trigonometry, you know, as a trigonometry worker here, right? See, there's always that relationship that you can either go from this version to the other version. Think about the sine to the fourth right here. And it's a one fourth, right? But think about the sine to the fourth as a one minus cosine square x square right there. And then you can point it out that we make your way back to that. You see what I'm saying, no? Okay, and then think about that sine to the six right here. That's the same as a, so minus one third, right? And then think of that as a one minus cosine square of x, right? But to the third power, you know what I'm saying there? Okay, and then that, that will bring your way back to that other one. Uh, and of course, it takes foiling work, right? It takes foiling work, and then uh, think about your sine to the eighth right here. That's a one eighth, right? Times a one minus cosine square of x again, but to the fourth power. And then do the foiling work, and it will cancel out. So any extra term, any extra constant term, we all group together to be a, an updated C right here. Okay? And so that's why it's, it, it, it's going to turn out equal. See what I mean? Function. It's just a matter of it's just a matter of uh, of uh, can we write the trigonometry with that. So that's why you know and any of your work with that should be able to have both versions and you guys should be able to verify that they, they are the same. So here of course time is limited for us. So we, I just want to pinpoint right, that's how we can make the two answers look alike with that. So we handle that case right there. So let's look into another problem. We're still in this kind of uh, situation where you have a a power of the sine times with another with, with a power of the cosine. Okay. But now the worst case is here that both of them are even, right? So anytime as long as you recognize one power being being odd, that's that solves all problems easily. And we don't need the reduction formula. But now let me bring you in part C right here. An integral, and how about sine to the fourth of x, right? Times the cosine. I don't want to make the problem too nasty for our limited time, so how about just cosine squared? Okay, but the idea is that it's a combination of two even powers. Okay. That's the generality of this problem right here. It's two separate powers, two, two the powers of the sine and the cosine, right? and then both powers are even. Right here, that's our case. Right? Let's help with that. Both powers are even. There you go. Okay. When, when that happens, then it's easier, I'm just saying it's easier to choose, to think about the, the one with the lower power right here, right? Think about that one. So sine to the six, of x, I'm leaving it there for now, but that, I, I picked the lower power, but then I think of that square right here as a one minus Sine square of x. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that's the point actually. Thank you for catching that. It was sine to the point, not sine to the six. And then in the next step, I'm gonna get sine to the fourth of x minus sine to the six of x. So two separate terms, but they all with high powers and they, they all so see so in what my point is, in the next step, we're going to produce a one separate integral sine to the fourth of x. And then you got another separate integral for sine to the sixth of x. You guys with me on that, okay? So now the deadly thing is that think about you have two separate problems, both with even power, right? And you got to use the reduction formula for both of them. Okay? So the advice here is that we got to use a. So using the. Reduction formula, and we have no choice. So at that one step, you have to uh, use a reduction formula, right? For sine fourth of x, right, and integral of sine to the sixth of x. That's the, the intention. See what I'm saying? Huh? But that's that's a certain thing that we can do. So. So let's apply the reduction formula. The reduction formula for the sine to the fourth, right? What does it say right here? See, I don't even remember the formula myself. Okay? So you guys are free. I mean, free to always carry that around and, and stare at that, okay? And I just now put it on canvas. Okay? So you, you have a look at that. You see when it comes to formula, I'm the worst instructor. Okay? So we got 
minus one fourth times sine cube of x. Right? And then the, we multiply with a cosine of x, and we have a plus here is a and then the, the fourth power in here making it a three fourths right here an integral of a sine of square of x dx. So that here is the formula that we use for the for the sine to the fourth. You want to say no? And then I'm going to use uh, separately. So we got minus, right? I'm going to open parentheses. Now think about that integral over here, right? That's why before that integral, we got a subtraction. So now I'm going to use the reduction formula again. So here I'm looking at the, uh, okay, so that's the six power right there. That's why in my mind earlier, I got the so negative one six, right? Sine to the fifth cosine of x. You guys agree? Okay. And then the, and then plus, right, a, a 5, 6 for here, integral of uh, sine to the fourth of x. Are we good with that so far? Right. I'm going to proceed actually one step further. I'm still going to hold on to that sine square. Right. So we got minus 1 fourth sine cube. It's just about we're keeping things organized. We've got sine cube of x, cosine of x, right? And then the my, I mean, plus of 1 6 sine to the fifth of x, cosine of x, right? And then now we're going to take to the turn of the integral, so plus a 3 fourths, right? The integral of sine squared of x dx, and then minus a 5 6, right? With the integral of a sine to the fourth of x dx. Go ahead. Trace, uh, keep track of my arrows again. Any arrows that you guys not notice? All right, so no arrows found so far. And so now in my next step, I'm keeping the two finished terms right there as a minus one fourth, right? Uh, sine cube of x, cosine of x, right? plus one six, sine cube of x, X. And then plus a three fourths integral of sine square of x, right? Dx. And I'm still holding on to this guy right here. I'm still holding on to that guy. Right? And then minus a five six, right? right? Sine to the fourth of x dx. But now see, this guy is still this guy is higher power, right? Let's use a reduction formula one more time for that one. See what I'm saying there? So think about it. I could have written so right from that board like this. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna think about this this way. It's a minus five six, right? But then that integral of the sine to the fourth again, we're gonna rewrite it as right? so it's a negative one fourth, right? Sine to the sine cube of x, cosine of x, you guys agree? Okay. And plus, and now it's another three fourths, right? Three fourths with the integral of a, of a sine squared of x dx. I just follow that reduction formula one more time, right? And I still, and we're still keeping that the sine integral of sine square x or dx in, in the front here for a reason. Right? So it's all about we organizing that, and we keep breaking it down from the higher one down and the higher one down. And then let's distribute out, let's distribute out that the minus five x. I mean five six right here. Well, so these terms right here, minus one fourth, right? Sine cube of x. Of x plus one six sine to the fifth of x plus of x right plus three fourths sine squared of x as an integral I keep that the same now that's multiplied in we're looking at the plus right and that's making it the five uh, twenty fourths right sine cube of x uh, sine of x and then the, that's a, making it a subtraction right minus and then six cancel with three right here making it a uh, 5 over 8, right? A 5 8 integral of sine squared of x dx. Are we good? Double check with my uh, mathematical errors of any kind. Everything okay so far? And so, now I'm going to see these two as like terms. See that there? And so now we're pretty much at, at, uh, at that uh, victory. Around the corner, I know. Sine cube, cosine of x, right? 
And you also have another sine cube right here. So let's combine like terms. Negative one fourth with a five tw over twenty fourth. So that's twenty four. So six times over. It's going to be a negative one over twenty four here. It's combining these two like terms, right? Yeah, see what I'm doing with that. Those two like terms are added up together, so 5 24 minus 1 fourth okay, it gives me a negative 1 over 24. Right? And then uh, I have a plus 1 6, okay, the sign you could pair of x, times cosine of x. So those are the finished terms. So now, as far as the remaining integrals, as far as the re remaining integrals, I keep them in the, the underlying brackets right here. Go to minus 5 8 plus with a 3 fourth, so making it. Uh, Plus of one eighth in a row sine squared. That's the x. Just one more time, I'll do the thing with that. Are we good? And now we use the double integral. So when it comes down, to see the reduction formula. That when we are keep applying that on the even power of the sine or cosine, at some point we're going to end up with a sine square or cosine square. Right? And that's where you have to use a you have to use a uh, the double integral formula for this. Now it's going into a, a one eighth right? in a row. Of uh, one half plus cosine of two x over two. Okay. All of that there, dx. Okay. That's what it does right here for us. See what I mean? Then everything else is defined to be a minus one over twenty-four. So sine cube x cosine of x right. plus one six sine to the fifth of x cosine of x. Yeah. Now, all of that, all of these two terms right here, we got plus one eighth, right? And then your inner rows here becomes a one half x plus yes, one fourth minus alpha two x. Okay. Let's see. And all together, the final answer comes to the following. Minus 1 over 24, sine cube of x, cosine of x, plus 1, 6, okay. sine to the fifth of x, cosine of x. And when we multiply that 1, 8 to each of the terms here, we're looking at the plus 1, 16, x, right? plus 1 over 30 second, okay. sine of the x plus c. That's how we've done for that in a row. Okay. Okay. So we got way so it's, it's lengthy and, and we got a, we got no other choice or other other than the, no choice other than just using the, the reduction point of it. And we got a way to organize these steps to make it easy to keep track of. Okay. Okay. That step right here I could have also done okay. right there. We can split out a little bit that same function. We could have also done uh, leaving the cosine square of x the same, right? Making the sine to the fourth as a sine sine to the fourth. I can turn that into a one minus cosine square of x all square right? dx. So you take some time foiling that out, right? You can also take some time foiling that out and then use a reduction point point for all of the even cosine. That's another route as well to work with that. But I, it's going to be longer, so I chose to tackle down directly on the one with the lower power of them. Okay, that's, that's the plan of how these things work. All right. Any question for you? Let's keep looking at more integration techniques. Okay. So, aside from the aside from those strict integrals that we've that you have taught you, those are the, re the requirements, uh, those are the requirements that, that you have to be put in your learning. Okay? But outside of those, there are also, uh, there's also some of the integrals that involve it. Because last time we finished, up to like the power of, of the sine function uh, multiplied with the power of a cosine function, right? And we, we learned how to handle all of these cases right here. See what I'm saying? But then aside from that, just for you to be aware, of course, we're not going to get into anywhere into those, but uh, there are still those. Uh, there's still those trick integrals, like uh, you got a combination of secant, right, to some power, okay, and then tangent to some power right there. Okay. 
But uh, with these right here, those are optional. So I ha I'll, I'll also post some video lectures of, of my own with them for, for you to look at, at these right here. But uh, it's not really that that strict required. You know? So just for you to be aware that there are these things up there. So I'll post the videos on Canvas. And if you have time to watch it, there won't even be a science for those in particular ones. We're only going to focus, like I said, we're only going to focus in our learning with these. Right there, that's, that's our focus point for the trick. For the trick in the row. But then with these right here, it's, it's optional. So with these, and then there's also the, the co secants, right? To some power. And then there's the, the, so a lot of times it's like that co secant go side by side with the co tangent. Okay. So these in the row right here, these are all optional. Right? So I'll have the electro, I'll post it on Canvas for you to be tangent learning to get. But uh, we, we, we don't even have to focus enough. Okay, so just, yeah? Uh, this one's going to be on the assignment, the CCAT. No, the assignments only has these points here. Like I said, because those are the, the one that anywhere I'm, I'm teaching, they require you guys to learn. But these things right here, you say, back in my time, it was pretty that way. <laughs> and that's probably why they say they, 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 they rule it out. They decide. And we don't, there are not too many times you guys see these in your real life problem. Okay? And that's why they, they took it out from the learning. So if you want to know what to, to enhance your, your learning, then if, yes, reach my the video lecture that I eventually will post. They, they get a little lengthy too, because it's a lot of explanations. Okay. All right. So, but other than that, we're, we're done with the trick in the world. Right? So any question with the trick in the world so far? 